Okay, so let's pick up where we left off before. We created a simple Windows 8 application in C-sharp. Um, I'll go to the File menu, and I'll go to Recent Projects and Solutions, and I think it was App 9 was the solution. It was the last one loaded. Okay, uh, let me close this down for a second here. Um, let's look at the solution. Like, what a solution is, is it's a group of projects. Um, right now we only have one project and that's fine for learning, but normally when you're developing software you're actually working on a bunch of projects at the same time. Um, for now, keeping it simple, we just have this app 9 project. And the startup file is this app.xaml file right here. I'll double click that. And you can see uh, some XML here. Um, I, I don't think we need to deal with this too much right now. I'll close that. The main thing we're going to be working with is this main page.xaml. So I'll double click that one. There we go. And this is our Hello World app that we created before. And again, we have our XAML. Let me make this bigger here. We have our XAML XML on the bottom and the visual editor on top. Let's look at this in a little bit more detail down here. Um, if you're not familiar with XML, XML is just a way of laying out information. Here we have what's called an element or a tag called page, and I'll just highlight the opening page tag. It begins with this uh, left brace, has the name page, and it ends with this right bracket down here, the greater than sign. Um, and for every element, there's going to be an ending element, which is a slash page, like down here. So this whole XAML file is just one big page. Um, in between our first page element, we have a grid element now, or tag. Um, so for our beginning grid, we also have our slash grid down here to end it. Um, now our text block tag, yeah, here's our beginning tag, text block, and our ending has a special ending. Um, like you don't always have to have a closing tag, which is its own tag, like slash grid for grid. You can just put a slash and then a greater than sign. So this whole thing is considered one element or one tag right here for a text block. And you'll see this shorthand a lot where you can just do a slash greater than to end it. It makes things a lot simpler. But you can see the, the basic structure of a XAML page. You have a page, and inside that there's a grid, and inside the grid there's a text block. Now if you look closely, when I select grid or click on the grid here, you'll see a blue outline around the whole user interface. Again, let me go in and uh, I'll fit all. Now you can see this blue outline around the whole screen. So that's what the grid is. It takes up the whole screen. If I put the cursor on the text block and click, then you'll see the blue outline around Hello World, which is our text block. So that's the basics of what a XAML file is. You have a, it's called either a tag or an element called page. And you have a tag called grid, and it ends here, and then a tag called text block. Now if we were going to you know, say and add another text block. You know, we can go to our our uh, toolbox over here, drag and drop it in. Oh, and it crashes really bad. <laughs> well, it is an RC version. Maybe there's just a bug. All right, so we have now. If you look at this teeny tiny text box down here, you can see it added another text block in our XML. So these two are always kept in sync, like the visual editor and the um, XAML file, the XML file down here, are always kept in sync by Visual Studio.